Hello, everybody. Karen Bryant here with Angela Overkill Hill. And you are watching What Had Happened Was. What had happened was we gotta get we gotta get what had happened was what <laughs> why is it so raspy today? <laughs> I don't know, it's just funny to me. I just feel like well, what had happened was what there's so many fun ways to say it was what happened You're saying was. it like the the old lady in front of the burning building. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> right. That they probably well, shouldn't what? ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like she can't even see. Like, why are you asking her? Exactly. How does she know <laughs> that yeah. the building was burning? Yeah. yeah, it's funny. Well, hi everybody. Welcome <laughs> to uh, I believe show number thirty-three. Hey, uh, thirty-three. That's a good hey. number. Yeah, it is. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey. It's so cool. So it's a Monday. We uh, this weekend we had UFC Vegas 37, where Anthony yes. Smith was in the main event. We also yeah. had uh, Bellator 266 or seven, was it? I think I think 66. Yeah, 266. I, think, I, think, I gotta check my hashtag. Wait, because also UFC 266 is this coming weekend. But yeah, Bellator oh. 266 was I think this past weekend uh, with Phil Davis, and so we will talk about that as well. Yeah. Uh, talk about a little bit of some. Uh, Jitsu, I went over to the High Rollers tournament, um, which was which was cool. Oh, nice! Yeah, 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 yeah. So nice. Um, How was that? Did you uh, participate? <laughs> uh, the festivities, the extracurriculars. Will neither confirm nor deny that. Angela. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone knows that Karen's Jamaican, right? <laughs> I will. Is that a stereotype or is it, it's uh, a total stereotype? But, but yeah. is it like a legit is one? It a, is it a legit one? Yeah. Is my daughter watching the show? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what well, we'll speak in was, <laughs> what, 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 what had happened was you get a contact high over there. Um, we may as well actually start with that. Yeah, I, I went over there with uh, Tyron after work. Nice. Because he wanted to, I, he was going to go over and see one of his homies. Okay. I knew that Hanato Laranja was actually over there calling the event. Hanato oh. and I have been doing our thing on Tuesday. So I was like, yeah. all right, let me go. I'll roll over with you, T. Wood. Got over there. Um, I also knew that Jorge Masvidal was going to be there calling the main event with Hanato. So it was fun to run into uh, Gamebred as well. I haven't seen him in a while. So we were over there for a bit, and I at one point I sat down behind Hanato. He was they were calling it, um, and he had Robert Drysdale with him too, who I've known for a long time. So that was great. But uh, so I think it was when Jorge had sat down. So I was sitting with Robert, and we were chatting, and then I realized we were like right in the background of the shot, and I was like, "Yeah, I really probably don't need to be in this shot." And then there was a little place called the podcast room in the back that I thought the window was. Like one of those two-way mirrors that you can see out of but not in. Apparently, I guess you can see in. <laughs> they usually use a smoke screen. Oh, there's a smoke screen in there. Anyway, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if people see the footage of the bomb, the cannon that 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 Jorge and Tyron took uh, participated in, it was pretty entertaining to see that happen. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Jake Shields was there in the main event. It was Cops versus Stoners. Jake yeah. was able to get the victory that I met the cop that he beat like he was really cool. Everybody it was just a really cool vibe. Um, everybody was friendly, nice, nice thing. And it was for a great charity and stuff. So yeah, high rollers, uh, BJJ was fun. That's awesome. I really wanted to be part of that one, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but I don't know what happened. I, I guess I just didn't hit them up in time, but yeah. they like a good little group of people. I've been working real hard on my jits. So High Rollers is the only tournament that I've done in recent history. So I really want to go back there. I like I like I like the vibe there. It's just super chill and I've always been um nervous about doing grappling tournaments because like when you're a UFC fighter, people are like, oh, I'm going to tap out the UFC fighter. And it's easy to get hurt when people are like, ah! you know, <laughs> like, give me your ACL. Let me tear it apart. So I've always been like a little nervous. But now that I've been working on my jits a little more, like with jujitsu people, 
Yeah, I want to get back in there. So hi, Rola is holla at your girl. Holla at your girl. Holla. Right. Yeah, well, it right. was cool. They were really, really nice. Uh, nice people over there. Nice organization. Great hospitality. And yeah, I've worked on Submission Underground with Chael. I was hitting him up recently, like, when can I come back? You know, because yeah. the two tournaments are really fun. And obviously it's because of COVID that I haven't been able to go. And um, hopefully I'll be able to go back up there. But you're right. Like, it's it's kind of a fun thing. Um, you know, I've been up there when, like, uh, a lot of uh, UFC fighters and Bellator fighters have competed in this in the grappling. And it is a cool extra outlet. But you're right there. You, you do have a target on your back as a UFC person. For sure, yeah. people want to take you out. But I think that's more so for, like, the legit uh not legit not that it isn't legit but like the ones that uh bgj competitors are like we're gonna do this and we're gonna clean sweep it and yeah. we're gonna get you know lots of accolades for it i feel like that has more of this like uh um uh, aggressive kind of scariness to it where when you're doing something like high rollers it's a one-off event it's not a tournament um you you go in, you compete in front of people. It's more for entertainment purposes yeah. than for like, this is going to be like the stepping stone to the rest of my BJJ career. So like people are a lot more chill. They're a lot more friendly. Um, and I like that vibe, you know, I, yeah. like uh, when I did uh, high rollers, I, I went up against this girl and I was, oh my God, I was lit. Like <laughs> I wasn't going to smoke. But unfortunately, um, I was standing around too long. <laughs> I was standing around waiting for my waiting for my match a little too long. So by the time we started rolling, I was just like, "Yo, what am I doing here? Like, what is happening?" <laughs> and we we had like our horns locked, like we were just like uh, over under position, yeah. just dancing waltzing for like what felt like forever and i'm like what am i doing and then i tried to shoot and yeah. ended up rolling off of the mats <laughs> oh no yeah no because you yeah. they have to catch you because yeah you can fall yeah. down yeah. it was so it was so silly and then uh i remember us both like looking at each other and laughing after that happened so it was a fun time like it was it was super chill and i was on top the whole time but then she swept me in the final minute and got a couple points and I was like, stupid BDJ, but it was fun. So, cool. <laughs> so well, now sure I definitely want to do it again um, uh, and redeem myself and also try not to be as lit or at least <laughs> or, or at least be better at being lit and showing how good my BJJ is now. Nice. So, You're yeah, nice. I mean, high rollers. <laughs> rollers, yeah. I'll go back and watch you because that was really fun. So, yeah, I'll go back nice. anytime. time. And it was, yeah, it was really cool. Um, so, yeah, so I went over there after work. Uh, the main event of UC Vegas 37 was Anthony Smith up against Ryan Span. Ryan was number 11 coming in. Anthony was number six. And I know you were up at Phil's fight um, in San Jose. So you yeah. did this one uh, in real time. But Anthony was in full on, like, let me take what's mine. Let me remind everybody who I am mode. You know, Ryan before the fight was, you know, I think there was a little bit of a misunderstanding where Anthony thought Ryan was more mad about some things than he was, but, mm. but Ryan was fired up for this and yeah. it was a big opportunity for him. And he knew that and going in. And so there was one line in particular, I think that rubbed Anthony the wrong way. It was that whole, you know, he, I'm not getting locked in the octagon with him. Like he's getting it locked in there with me. And there was, I think one of those, <laughs> There's not enough respect on my name situations uh, yeah. that Anthony was feeling in that. You know, this was his 52nd fight. Mm -hmm. And so there was a little bit of a scuffle after the fight where Anthony kind of felt like he didn't get enough respect. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I went watching that. I was just like, whoa, like, what did I miss? Like, felt like felt like this was a spicy, like, there was a spicy lead up to this fight that I, that I must have missed. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's just those lines that everyone says, you know, because you've heard that a million times. You've heard that line a million times. Like, you're not locked in case you're not locked in case you're Like, it's, it's a catchphrase. But um, I feel like a lot of times, um, we have a fighter like Anthony who's just done everything, fought everyone, you know, won in every way, lost in every way. Um, people can forget. They can forget how good they that Anthony is. They can forget how like talented he is and the residuals of 
people disrespecting him, people underestimating him. It rolls over into each fight, you know? So, like, him just smoking Ryan and then yelling at him afterwards, like, hey, this is, like, what did you expect, you know? Like, I, I totally get that. I totally get that because it sucks to have a bunch of confidence in yourself and then hear everyone else not having confidence in you, you know, hear your, uh, your opponent not, and even though, like, I don't think Ryan took him, you know, as, as a lesser skilled guy, but just hearing those words come out of his mouth, like you would even pretend to think that this is going to be a walk in the park, like get out of here, you know? So it's, I, I totally get that. Uh, everything feels personal, especially in the moment. And then after the fight, like I'm sure they were chill afterwards, you know, I'm sure there were no hard feelings, but that immediate, like people think like suddenly you can just shut off. Like I'm trying to kill this guy, but no, <laughs> It lasts. The effects last for a while. Like, it, like some some people can, some people can't. But when the emotions are running super high, and you get a finish like that real fast, then yeah, I get it. Um, I, I, the only thing I can compare that to with my own experience is um, when I fought Hannah Cyphers, uh -huh. and right, this had nothing to do with Hannah Cyphers, but right before the fight. Um, I forget what it was. Mike Perry had said something to an actor that I really liked. And he was like calling him the N word and just being like really, really disrespectful Ooh. and not, not like saying it in like, you know, in like our, our, uh, Oh yeah. Term of endearment type way. He was like using it like a white man would use it. And I was just like, come on. <laughs> like, I know, I know you've been like, you know, getting away with this for a long dabbling, time. Dabbling, yeah, borderline. Dabbling, like, you know, oh, I'm from the hood. I'm a white boy from the hood. But he was using it in the way that someone who's privileged would use it to put down a black man. So I called him out. I was like, hey, man, this isn't cool. That's all I said. Hey, man, this isn't cool. And I had, so he never responded. But we all know that his eventually he said that he realized that it was wrong what he was doing and we thank him for that but who responded were all these mike perry fans and they were the weebiest looking dweebiest looking white boys like sliding into my dms calling me the n-word and it just pissed me off so much and this is like a week before my fight so all fight week i didn't look at my social media at all because yeah. i don't want to see these fucking screech looking motherfuckers <laughs> over there going what's up my nigga what's up my nigga you know like it all oh, got me so angry so um Poor Hannah Cyphers. <laughs> Poor Hannah got it. Uh -huh. I went into that fight and I was so angry and I knew all those little dweebs wanted me to lose. And I just, I, as soon as I got on top of her, I was just like, I'm not getting off of you until they stop this fight. And then when they stopped it, I was still on top of her. And like the part that I was embarrassed about was that they stopped the fight. I'm on top of her amount. And I just go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like over a carcass or something. <laughs> and then and then my brain my brain finally clicks into like, oh, the fight's over. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. And then I hug sorry. her. <laughs> Still oh. on top of her. I hug her. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll be I'll be moving now. But we uh, understand. Yeah, the, the emotions run high. Like you don't know what aside from what Ryan had said in his lead up, you don't know what else was in Anthony's head, like leading up to this fight. The fact that he had this like huge career and he's so close to getting to the top and, you know, he's just trying to make another run. And yeah, that was a great way to prove that he deserves uh, another shot. So yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. And I like what Cormier said too. He said something about, uh, yeah, just, you know, that's, that's the game. That's, That's what's going to happen. Yeah, you, you, you have to expect that. And, you know, I think for um, for Ryan, it, it is a great experience for him to have this first main oh, event. Man. You know, there, there's a lot. Okay, so 
folks know I work with Anthony very often over uh, at, at, at UFC, at ESPN stuff. So um, we talk a lot. I've seen him a lot before the lead up to this fight. I know a lot about what happened in the other ones. And even though he's not a guy that's going to sit around and make a bunch of excuses for stuff, like he'll just own it. Yeah, I lost. You know, I lost to Corey. I mean, to uh, to Glover. I lost to, you know, whatever. He's like, I, I, I lost to Rakic. Like, I own it, whatever. But the truth of the situation is there was a lot going on in his personal life that was after the break-in. There were different things that were going on, and he was not able to really fully be the Anthony that we saw on Saturday night. You know, mm. he wasn't, but he's still going to show up and fight and do his job. But we didn't see the the, the same guy, and I think mm. Saturday proved it, and Saturday did remind everybody. So I think that's part of it is that those two fights that he lost, even though he's won since then, he was against Devin Clark, and everyone's like, okay, you're supposed to do that to, to him. No disrespect to Devin, who is a very tough man, which we, we can get to in a second. But I think a lot of it is that people are kind of remembering those fights with Anthony, lo him losing his teeth, and they're thinking that's who he is. <laughs> and, you know, and so they, they kind of forgot, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, uh, there was a lot going into it. And honestly, um, so the way that he won the fight and, you know, there was a point where uh, Ryan picked him up and was taking him across the octagon. And I was at, we were joking after because Anthony had this really funny expression on his face, like, oh, OK, really? Are we really doing this? Like, <laughs> doing it, it the was, favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a really funny look. But it's like, it's oh, wait, no, the Frankie. Pay for it. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to pay for it. Um, but so he said he really wanted to knock Ryan out. But the way the fight was ending and finishing, the, the submission became just obvious and sort of inevitable. Mm -hmm. But but I will say, I, I like I said, I've seen Anthony in the lead up to this, and I know how hard he was working. I spoke for a long time with his coach, Mark Montoya, afterwards. Uh, we were talking for a long time, and I know how hard they've been working and all this stuff. But honestly, until I saw Anthony after the fight, even then, that's when I really understood the pressure that he was feeling. So seeing him later on in the evening af you know, at, at the bar, having a drink with him, then I really understood what happened in the octagon and all of that emotion. Cause like you said, it's a, it's a buildup of all kinds of stuff that you're taking in there with mm -hmm. you inside the octagon. And honestly, even though I knew how intense it was seeing the level of relief and seeing the difference in the, the heightened Anthony and the relaxed Anthony was such a big difference. I was like, mm -hmm. Oh snap. Yeah. That fight was real important. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it, I don't know if I'm articulating this the way I mean it, but like, I could tell after the, after the win, I could tell how hard he really needed the win and wanted the win and worked for the win. And yeah, so, he almost looked lighter. Way lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like just. Visibly. <laughs> yeah. Like, his, like, whole, like it literally then, lifted his spirits. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally understand. Totally, and it was cool yeah. to see. Yeah. <laughs> it was, cool. was was there anything that he said about it um, afterwards? Like anything aside from the obvious that he was upset about, you know, disrespect or whatever? No, it's just really that. And it's like, yeah, that is, you know, it's walking in on his 52nd fight. And it, and, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like he, stuff he said in the lead up. Like, he's like, yeah, I've fought a ton of Ryan's fans. I've mm -hmm. fought a ton of these guys, you know, and he hasn't fought me. And I think that's you know, what it, what it is too, it's a lot of it coming together and, and Anthony understanding maybe his place in the hierarchy. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and having a sense of ownership of that. And, you know, I think he is one of those fighters that a lot of other fighters really respect too. Um, whether or not the fans always do, I think the fighters are like, Oh yeah, no, he's a G. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, he's definitely one of those people where, uh, you know, you get the call and they're like, Oh yeah, he's going to fight. Um, you, you're, uh, we want you to fight Anthony Smith. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> right. The dude that uh, kept fighting after his teeth got knocked out. That guy. Any, yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> you got anyone else in there? That needs a fight. <laughs> right. Maybe someone right. ring tire, so right. I don't look like a punk. <laughs> right, right, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so he asked for the rematch with Rockic, and right, like mm. when he was in the octagon with Mike, uh, it looked like Rockic had responded and said, "Yeah, you know, they were free to do it." So Anthony had nice. this great "Merry Christmas to me" line that they they will maybe fight in December, which could be very cool, um, you know, because Rockic is kind of the only guy in the equation without a fight lined up. We have the title fight coming up with Jan and Glover. Yidi mm. Krohachka is you know, going to be the backup fight for that. Uh, mm. In a couple of weeks, we have Tiago Santos. He's going to be fighting um, Johnny Walker. That's in the beginning of October. So yeah, they're really kind of okay. isn't, you know, unless Anthony can kind of, kind of be a backup for the title fight or something, but GD already is, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that could be cool. 
Maybe uh, he can fight a uh, GD. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. And is just know that the fight might get scrapped <laughs> if, the, right. if the main event pulls out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're right. That could be kind of cool. So, um, so yeah. So, um, so you were on the flip side of that. You were up in San Jose because at the yeah. same. I was going to say at the same time, but it wasn't at the same time because obviously oh. Anthony's fight was already done. Because yeah. I ended up watching Phil's fight a little later in the evening. But so if you can set that up because you were all this week. You're like anybody got tips? I'm going up to San Jose, and I figured. Maybe you were going up there to train, but then I, I, duh, I was like, oh, she's there for film <laughs> Yeah, um, I wanted to check it out. I've heard good things, um, but let me tell you, there's there isn't shit to do out there. <laughs> we we thought it would be a fun vacation, um, just because it wasn't that tough of a drive, and yeah. we've driven up to San Francisco before to uh, hang out with the Melendezes. So we're like, yeah, that was a cool drive, and we, I knew we missed some things. Um, so I thought it'd be a, a fun little road trip to do. So we did it, and it was fun. Uh, the lead up to getting to San Jose was awesome. Um, just driving along the coast and seeing all the cool golfs and stuff. We ended up stopping at this Dutch village called yes. Slavon. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun. It's all it's all of it. I have no idea. Every time they said it, I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah. you know the place you're at but uh it was it was a lot of fun we stopped there real quick walked around and then drove up and um and yeah once we got to san jose there wasn't really much to do everything closes at like nine <laughs> we're like oh yeah original joe's at least and get a, and get the chicken farm or something no i didn't and we were oh. our hotel was actually connected to that but we Original Joe's is the best place. Like after the fights, usually that's where everybody goes. So I'm surprised ah, I you didn't go after it. Because I, yeah. I used to go there for Strike Force all the time. And literally after the fights, we would all just be down in Original Joe's. Oh, wow. Well, that yeah. must have been the days before Yelp because they had like 3.5 stars. So I was like, I'm not going anywhere near that place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. It was a few years ago with Strike Force. I mean, we all yeah. went. Nobody but told me to go. If someone had told me to go, I would have gone. But um, we, where did we go? We went to some, everywhere we went was kind of like newish. You know, I could yeah. tell like it was like a new hipster joint. Um, right. And dude, I was really surprised at, at how strict they were with masks and stuff. I'm like, oh. dude, like San Diego is uh, lucky. Like they should be thinking they're lucky stars. Like I, even I was like, Oh my God, I have to wear a mask again. You know, like everywhere you went, um, there were signs, like, even if you're vaccinated, please wear yeah, a mask. Yeah, we do all over LA. We still have to. Yeah. I guess I haven't hung out in LA either. So, but like San Diego is so everything's open. Everything's, uh, you know, you don't have to wear a mask if you, if you're, uh, vaccinated and, um, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I'm like, oh, okay. It's, no, I kind of see what they're complaining about, but still not that hard to wear a mask. But um, it was it was fun uh, just like walking around. We went to see the mystery house, the Winchester mystery house. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> that was Did fun. Did anything freaky happen or... No, no. I just uh, we we just hung back on the tour and tried to like take spooky pictures, but <laughs> nothing nothing too crazy happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then we went to see the fights on Saturday, and they were pretty good. We got there um, right as Deanna Bennett was walking out, cool. and she actually had a really good showing. I was surprised. Like I think uh, she was a pretty heavy underdog against mm -hmm. that. Uh, Lara, the the girl who dances, the uh, yes. Mexican, she fought for the title before against Alima. Um, yes. So I thought she would she would um, do really well, but Deanna Bennett just looked sharp. She looked on point, and she's one of those people. If you if our viewers don't know, she was on top, and I don't remember if she had a UFC official UFC fight, um, or if they didn't sign her after either. tough. But she was on the tough with. Um, with Sajara, season. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. Sajara Eubanks. And, right. um, and you know, she a lot of times she would come in and she would perform well, and then sometimes she would just get smoked. And the level of skill just didn't seem to match, like, when she would have a bad performance. Like, it always seemed like she would show up sometimes and sometimes she wouldn't. So 
this night on Saturday, she showed up and it looked really good. So I was very impressed with her. Uh, we saw Gracie get a knockout, which is cool. I was like, ah, oh, here we go. Another girl. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Gracie with an uppercut. So that was cool. And uh, and then Phil fought against Yo Romero. And I was so upset because people were bullying Phil like crazy. I was so surprised and upset. I'm like, come on, guys. What's the USA chance? Come on. <laughs> uh, so every time uh, Phil, they said Phil's name, I'd make sure to go, yeah. yes, go Phil. So no one would get too disrespectful around me because yeah. my elbows can fly at any given moment. Talk about my friends. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was good. I was really happy for him. He showed out. He just like, mm -hmm. the first round was a little scary, but it's always like that with Yo Romero fights. Yeah. But I think people um, forget that Yo fights the way he does until they watch him fight again. You know, yeah. like people yeah. always remember the knockouts. They remember, um, you know, his crazy athleticism. But I feel like a lot of times people forget that a lot of it is him doing the Macarena, you know, and voguing and look, doing weird stuff and yeah. hitting his microphone and trying to like, <laughs> and trying to, you know, freak out his opponent before he does that big athletic movement that can yeah. either their head off or, you know, they get out of the way. So I was happy that Phil was able to get out of the way of all his big movements and then start picking him apart and, start taking him down and like once he found that takedown he was relentless with it so it was a really great fight for phil he uh i guess you could say he overkilled it <laughs> i guess you can say that he did i guess you could say yeah. he overkilled it uh in his fight against yo Romero, and i was so happy for him and so impressed as well yeah no he looked good so i ended up watching that fight with Jorge Masvidal and T Wood oh, and like oh. um and a bunch of folks. We were in the podcast room at High Roll. My stomach. I oh, hope this mic can't pick it up. I haven't eaten yet today. I'm. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't hear stomach, it. I don't hear my it. My stomach just like was like yo. <laughs> um, but um, but I'm munchies at. <laughs> yeah. So so I watched. Uh, so we were we were. You know, obviously I was in a very pro Yoel room and I love Yoel. I'm sorry. And I, you know, I love me some Phil Davis too. So I, I yeah. really didn't have like a, I wasn't, oh my God, this guy's got it. Like, so I, I just mm. really like both of them so much. And I really am a fan of how they both look in their shorts. If we're being honest, <laughs> those are some, those are some physical specimens. Um, <laughs> physical specimens and I love how Phil still wears the pink shorts to honor like that once was a bet a long time ago that he still just rocks with it and they look so good against his dark chocolate skin oh. but we digress we digress <laughs> okay. no, Phil, okay. Phil wears those shorts well I'm not, the, I'm, the, I'm not the only person who noticed how well Phil wears those shorts <laughs> Please. And I'm and I'm definitely not the first person to notice Yoel Romero's body. Because even like the homies that I'm watching the fight with are like, God damn. Look yeah. at Yoel Romero. Like why does he like, still look like that? Why is he still yeah, they're like, and and that's the whole thing. Everyone's like, he's 44, like what? And so yeah. um, yeah. So I had I kind of thought going into it, it could have been one to one going into the third round there. Um mm -hmm. Phil definitely took round two, but you know, round one might have been Yoel's. And um, like you said, you're right. He does a lot of these things, but he, he was moving and he did start faster than he has before. Remember, um, which was the one fight where they didn't throw a punch for a long time and everybody was freaking out and getting so mad. Uh, maybe it was, was it Whitaker? Might've been. Anyway. Yeah. But Whitaker anyway, or Adesanya. It, it, I right, know both of them. Those, yeah. It got yeah. booed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So on this one, I was glad that Yoel came out and, you know, right away was, was kind of going to work. And so, yeah, I thought it could have potentially been one-to-one -one going into the third, um, but it might've just been a clean sweep for Phil anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in the third round uh, was when he really put it on him. And that's kind of when you could see that maybe the 44 years was catching up to Yoel. Maybe it was, you know, and obviously a lot of it was just Phil, like, that top pressure, you know, is like one yeah. at one point he got him and he started to get inside control. And we were like, well, 
that's when people were sort of like, even, you know, even all the guys that are like so down with you. Well, we're like, yeah, yeah it doesn't look good. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, Phil is a specimen. And I think people forget that Phil left on his own accord. He wasn't cut. He, he it wasn't coming off of a loss. He just yeah. decided to go to Bellator because he get paid more. And like uh, saucy. same thing with gate guard. He's like, I want to get paid. Yeah, yeah. So I think people underestimate um, how high Phil's skill level is because he's in Bellator. I think people assume that the Bellator fighters aren't as good or aren't as talented as the UFC fighters. And that's not always the case. Um, yeah. So I, it was really cool to see that play out because Yoel isn't any older than he was in his last UFC fight, you know, like yeah. he's, he's still, he was 44 then he's 44 now. So it's not yeah. going to catch up with him that fast. Um, actually, let me fact check that. When was his last fight? <laughs> 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 let, me, let me fact that. Yeah, I, I was that. like, you're, yeah. just, you're going with it. I'm just going to sit back and let you have that. Yeah. 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 yeah like, like I'm not going to say sure. <laughs> but exactly sure how old he was. what happened was, well, what happened was, was fought in three years. Uh, actually, let me check. You know, it was it hasn't been that long since Yoel fought in the UFC. No, it was it last has year. Been a so year. he was yeah. he was he was forty three last time he fought, maybe depending on when his birthday yes. is, and right. he's forty four now. So he's right. he's still that athlete. He's still that guy that can put your lights out immediately. But when you get Yoel tired, that's when he starts not looking that great right and right. there's nothing more tiring than getting taken down and sit on you know so uh yeah i'm yeah. i'm very impressed with them I'm, I'm gonna like you know big up what phil did because that's my boy but at the same time i hate i hate when people say oh that looks like it. age is catching out with them yeah but really they just got wrestled to fuck it and it's tiring and like we've seen y'all get tired uh almost every fight that he's lost like we've seen that him getting tired pretty much means okay he's he's not coming back like he doesn't have a resurgence like um like some of the guys in his weight class so he's once he's once he's spent he's spent and yeah. phil was able to like just drain that energy tank and sit on him and hit him and yeah get the win so i was happy i was happy for him and i think it's a huge accomplishment and i still think y'all's gonna like fuck some people up and bellator they just gave him a horrible style yeah. matchup for sure yeah for sure well congrats to phil he's a good dude um yeah he's a, he's a lot of fun in fact actually i should put this little Here's another one from the from KB's catalog. But a long time ago, when Phil and Tyron and I had gone and done some stuff for the UFC for Black History Month, and we have this whole uh, segment about how people always assumed the two of them were on like every steroid in the book because they were just <laughs> like, "There's no way your bodies are real. Like they're just there's just no way." <laughs> and, you yeah, know? yeah. So uh, yeah, so it was cool. Well, congrats to him. I'm just trying to look where we are. Okay, so. Um, you, you made me laugh a second ago. <clears throat> I wanted to, um, people might've seen, you, you, I forget what you just said, but it made me laugh. So on the show, <laughs> when, um, that's a good sign, eh? <laughs> right? So when Anthony, when Anthony came on the post show with us, um, you know, it was me and Alan and Tyron and, you know, we're all, we're all friends. We're all, you know, everywhere. Um, so, uh, what is it on Twitter? Bo is it Bohashinia Depot? Is that the one on Twitter? There's somebody that like captures like goofy stuff in, oh, yeah, and all the time. Yeah. Or, or, or one of the, the guy who posted the Tito. Yes. Yes. Videos. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. they caught the thing. So poor Alan, because it was one of those things. So here's the thing. So sometimes on the air, somebody will say something and you know, we have to just keep going and you're on live TV and you have to act like you did not hear something yes. that was so sexual or so whatever or so weird you're like just keep going right just keep going <laughs> so earlier in the day earlier in the day Tyron had said something about so and so or it was the day before I one of the and he said well that oh yeah in the highlights okay it was Anthony first it was the Anthony thing first so Alan Alan's there and he says to Anthony did you know that he was gonna come in your face or something like that yeah. right? he, says, 
he goes, so he, he came in your face and then, and then he goes, you, he hears himself say it. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. It's so childish, <laughs> but then he tried to fix it. And so you could hear him saying it. And then he tried to fix it, which of course makes it worse. He underlined it by doing right. it. It's like, right. no and one would have caught in it, caught it, caught it. Right. Caught it. No right. one would and have so caught it if he had just kept rolling. But <laughs> except for the ones with the horrible minds like us. Right. So he says it, he catches himself, <laughs> then he tries to fix it. You're like, oh no. He's like, so oh, on, uh, the clip, uh, on the clip, on the clip, on the clip that's out on YouTube, right? You see it. And then somebody goes, they caught the side angle because I'm there. And then you just see me like turn my head and look oh, nice. like, and I'm like, what? You know, and, and so I'm sorry. I feel so bad because then Alan, after the show, we were laughing so hard because later in the show, we were doing some highlights and Tyron said, or he said it like, oh, that was it. He said it right about Anthony right at the beginning. Then he's like talking about how in the beginning, oh, we faced this thing and he didn't come out and fully, you know, and he said, he goes, he didn't come out and fully blow his load. Like oh, right nice. at the beginning. And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, what are you doing what? to me? <laughs> What are you guys doing to me? <laughs> and that one, nobody, luckily, we didn't pause or we didn't say it. We just kept going. But so, yeah, after the show, Alan's like, yo, did you guys hear me say that? We're like, yeah, bro. We could, you're like, how could you not? And then yeah. Tyler's like, but did you guys hear me? And we're like, yeah, bro. How could you not? And it's yeah. so, so it's just, See, I don't know. If, don't even... if you were a good bus driver, you would have thrown your own little line in about like buying his wife a pearl necklace afterwards or something <laughs> just to, yes. just to make the boys look less bad at their job like that's your job right your job is to make us look less bad at our job <laughs> would, yeah i'm gonna jump in with that line gets so yeah that's, a, that's no. what you that's what you should have done that's what i hate <laughs> to say it i am a very good teammate but every now and then you guys are out there all on your own and like, yeah you yeah you're like walking that plank all by yourself sorry <laughs> sorry, sorry. Peeps. yeah but I'm, it was I'm so funny and i feel right so now. bad Ooh. i feel so bad because it does happen. And then, so then I sent it to Alan because I saw that they had isolated that. It was on Twitter and I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry. That's awesome. That's so but funny. It's <laughs> damn funny though. It's damn funny and it's silly. But, but yeah. So, cause if you, you swore on the air, didn't you? I did. Don't talk about it. They forgot. <laughs> I felt like they forgot. I did. You know, I was, I got uh, swept away with um, Adesanya's win. And yeah. I was I was off stage, but they were you guys were talking to out of sign. Were you you were there, right? Or I was I with the boys I wasn't working on that, that one. one. Which, okay, which, yeah. I didn't was that work the Fight that Island one, one or was that Yeah, it was one of the Fight Island ones. He just beat um Yeah, Costa. I was doing the reporting. Yeah, you were okay. I was doing the reporting on that one. So you we did the fill in thing together where we were dancing. Yeah, but then, yeah. But then yeah, I think you were with John. After. Yeah, so yeah. Adesanya was on there going f bomb, f bomb, f bomb, and then I came in there and I was, and I felt like I was quoting him, <laughs> but <laughs> still not allowed. I still shouldn't have said it. I still Which, shouldn't have said it. You dropped the like, f bomb. I, yeah, I dropped the f bomb, and it was it was pretty. What'd you say? I don't remember. I was just like, yeah, can. Can I say that? And then I said no. <laughs> they said they was in the earpiece. They said no. Don't you ever do that again? <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> well, when we're um, on the app, you kind of feel like you can. On the app? Oh, um, on well, it was still a post show, so there's still like that air of. Uh, um, professionalism yes. that was totally like smashed down when Adesanya came on and dropped all his F-bombs, but it was Adesanya. He's the champ. He just knocked out somebody that was supposed to give him trouble. And right. he had, there was plenty of time to spare. Like <laughs> we were getting out of there early. So um, he's on there going, boom, boom, I'm the fucking best. I'm this and that. Like, fuck that guy. And, da, da, da. and like, I'm the fucking guy to beat. And, you know, just like dropping them here and there. And that's the way I talk. 
normally yeah. when I'm not in my professional voice. So, <laughs> yeah. So I fucked up. <laughs> Long story short, I fucked up. I was like, yeah, he's the fucking master. Something, something stupid. So there was no reason. There was no reason for the F-bomb. I was just, I was trying to quote him, I think. I think in my head I was quoting him and it did not come off well. <laughs> I could see Gooden was probably like, like because, his head probably why would she do that? Why would she do that? Yeah, sorry. The gem in me jumped up. It's, yeah. it's the gem. It's the gem life. I blame the gem life. And you hang That's around right. with, with a bunch of pirate pirate mouth fighters all day. Sometimes it slips out. It's very true. I um, <laughs> I've said that before. That yeah. That when I when I am hanging around people that are not MMA people, I realize how quickly how much MMA people swear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, yeah. know, you recognize it really up and fast. Let's just put it that yeah. way. Yeah, I get self conscious. I'll, I'll be the first if I'm the first to cuss in a conversation with someone that I first met. I just met. Then yeah. uh, I'm immediately self conscious. Me like, too. Oh, wait. Oh wait. Are we doing? Are we? Are we that comfortable? Are we? <laughs> are too. we doing this? Like, <laughs> I've been caught to the point. I've been caught where I'm like, oh yeah, that's not the. That's not the. That's not the crown. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Funny because I'm I'm curious for you. I literally was just having this conversation the other day that when I go to a um, let's say I go to a barbecue or I go to you know you go to a party. Um, I was joking that I wanted to get cards made that said, I'm not trying to sleep with your husband. I just work in sports. I'm not trying to sleep with your husband. I just work ah, in sports. That's funny. Whenever you go somewhere, you know, a lot of the time, look at, I have a daughter. Like I, obviously I'm a mom. It's not like I can't relate to women's mm -hmm. issues. And sometimes all I want to do is sit down with the girls and have a girl talk. But you know, a lot of the stuff I'm into is what guys are into. It's sports, mm -hmm. it's football, it's, you know, it's all this stuff. And so I find that a lot of time in social settings, I end up maybe spending more time with the guys and which case also you may be more likely to swear a little bit more and you know what I mean? And then you're back with the ladies and then I'm like talking to my tennis girls dropping I'm like, well, they don't, this <laughs> is not, these are not the people. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Remind yourself. Cause yeah, I get, I get a little bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You just got to know your audience, right? <laughs> For sure. Whoops. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah. So I have a question for you. This is kind of about a comment that had come in, you know, from time to time, I think maybe we should respond to some of the comments that we get in on what had happened was. Um, so what had happened was somebody wrote, I can't remember the exact question or whatever, but they implied, Angela, that you should go up to 125 pounds. Because you were big, they thought, or tall or something. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, well, what had happened was she actually had to bulk up for yeah. some girls at 15. Because I said there were some girls at 15 that were out muscling her. So she already had to put on size to compete with some of the girls at, 20, uh, at 15. So I kind of don't think 125 is in her future. But maybe you could address that because I thought that was a bit of a big ask. I don't know why people think this. I get this a lot. And I don't know why people keep saying it to me. <laughs> like, yeah, like you said, I had to bulk up to fight at 115. Um, when I was competing in Muay Thai, I fought at 110, between 110 and 105. So my plan was to be an atom weight. And my first fight uh, was really hard to get because if someone pulled out, all these atom weights are walking around at like 130 anyway. So if I had a fight pull out, then they couldn't find me a replacement. And then they try to book me at 115 anyway. So I'm like, well, fuck this. Like, why am I killing myself? Like, you know, dieting and everything to stay yeah. around 110 when I can eat and be happy and then barely have to cut weight to be at yeah. 115. So that's what I did at first. And when I first got in the UFC, you could see like I was a lot smaller when I fought. Like I would I would be walking at around 118 and then mm -hmm. I'd fight at about that weight too. You know, I'd make right. weight and it wasn't a weight cut. I just had to, you know, take big shit or something and I'd be good to go. So yeah. that's that's what I used to do. And then I started bulking up because I felt a little undersized. And now I look a little bigger in there, but I definitely don't look the biggest. 
by far. Um, like, uh, like if you look at my fight versus Gedalia versus Yoder versus uh, Ansaroff, like all these people are huge. Like they, I don't even know what they do to get that small and then get that big, but they blow up like crazy. And whatever they do, I don't think I would want to do it because I feel like it's really unhealthy to like, to explode like more than more than 10, 15 pounds the next day. But um, during fight camp, I'm walking at 25. Like yeah. it's really hard for me to stay above 25. Like I, if I'm if I'm at 130, I'm feeling myself. I'm like, oh, thick inch, fat inch. And that's kind of the joke. I always yes. post like hashtag fat inch. And that's when I'm between 125 and 130. I'm like yeah. thick, you know? <laughs> so so the fight at 125 would be like me fighting at 115 when I was a 110 or 105 or like I would just be undersized like it it you can outmaneuver the girls because you're a little faster but once they get on top of you they're using a good 20 30 pound weight advantage yeah. against you to keep you down and we saw that uh when Hannah Goldie filled in to fight Emily Whitmire. Um, they both fight at 115, but Goldie is definitely more of a 125er than Emily yeah. Whitmire. And you can see the difference. Like she was ripped still. She was yoked. Oh, <laughs> yoked. Like she, tits was sticking out to here because, like, you know, yeah. she, she can because she's like, you know, solid. She's solid muscle. And Whitmire just looked kind of soft. So, yeah that's the difference. Like I would never want to go into a fight where I'm putting myself at such a huge disadvantage mm -hmm. because I feel like the most dangerous part of MMA is the ground and pound. When someone really gets you stuck, like yeah. and they're punching your head and your head is hitting the mat. Like that's, that's probably like the worst position to be in because you can't really like uh, your ego doesn't let you tap to those positions. Right. right. You know, so so you're in there taking the most damage possible and trying to get up to protect yourself, but your head is bouncing against the mat. And if you're in there against someone who's bigger than you, then that's just way more dangerous than it needs yeah. to be. So that's why weight classes are important. That's why I don't fight above my weight class. Give me a certain matchup and maybe I'll think about it. But if I were... To, like I would never claim 125 as my weight class because I'm 125 like literally today you know yeah. I'm 125 right now and I'm I feel a little thick <laughs> well well and the thing about it too is when I imagine and this is actually a good segue when I imagine let's say you fighting Lauren Murphy I'm like yeah no I don't think so yeah like, she you, may. You, would, you would never I would never say that you and Lauren Murphy should fight in the same weight class ever yeah, no, she's a big girl. She's a big girl. She's a good grappler. Right. She's strong. Like, it, and it affects the takedowns too. Like, right. it's a lot easier to sprawl on someone who doesn't have that weight to like put all their all their weight into your hip flexor and make you yeah. sit down on your butt or like uh, to scoop you up, pick you up, like uh, like Ryan Span. You know, like all those yeah. things are easier when your opponent is smaller than you. Like. All, all takedowns are, are basically easier when your opponent weighs less than you. Right. And I'd be giving them that, you know, and to go in there and fight someone who is determined to sit on top of me like that, that would just be a really stupid thing to do. So no for thanks. sure. <laughs> well, and I bring her up because this weekend she's fighting Valentina at UFC 266. Mm. You know, it is, you know, she will be bigger than Valentina. Valentina's not that tall, but Valentina's, you know, the goat of the 25 division. Um, you know, that said, I give a lot of respect to Lauren. She has fought really, really hard and put together an incredible win streak to earn her way up to the top. Mm -hmm. It's just that Valentina just still and all seems so much better than like everybody. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I, but that said, you know, on any given night, something can happen. I'm not sure what you're expecting in that. I just, it's just from what we've seen from Valentina, it's just really hard to ever think somebody can take her out. Yeah. Well, remember everyone was freaking out when uh, Maya, like, got in on her hips. I don't even know yes. if she took her down, but she got in on her hips. I think yes. she might have gotten a takedown, but uh, Valentina was able to get up real quick. So it didn't really, 
it wasn't really yes. like a takedown, takedown. But everyone's freaking out. They're like, oh my God, Maya's like uh is doing way better than we thought. Like, what does that mean? So she showed some holes in Valentin Valentina's game. And then like uh her next fight, she just took took the girl down as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah. She's just like, you know what, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, right. I want you to uh or maybe it wasn't Maya, but it was um no, you're right. She out grappled. Was, and she was, was just a, like, yeah, you guys all think I can't grapple. So here it is. I can do this too. Yeah, no, she got, she got mad. <laughs> and right. she said, I have, I have zero holes. <laughs> I right. have no holes. She so, um, so I'm, I'm interested to see the fight, but I do feel like it's going to be another like offering to the dominant champion God, you know, like yeah. uh, the same thing they do with Amanda offering here is another offering for you and right. every now and then there's an upset so people are still waiting for that upset and they're just going to keep offering people up to to these dominant champs until somebody gets it because yep. you know everyone deserves a shot you know for everyone sure. deserves a shot of champ doesn't matter if uh the fans don't think you go in it doesn't matter if no one's putting respect on your name like you know, you go in there and you do your yeah. best. And, you know, if, if she wins, then that's her being a superstar all of a yep. sudden. So, like, right. so, yeah, it's always exciting to see uh, contenders step up to the plate. But my money's on Valentina. <laughs> mine too. Mine too. <laughs> well, we have a few minutes left in the show, but I want to ask you because both of us um, folks should know we are big 209 supporters. Both of us love us some Diaz's. So Nick is coming back to fight Robbie Lawler. This one is so hard because they are both such G's. Like I love mm. both of those guys so, so, so much. So <clears throat> really don't want to necessarily, you know, it's one of those where I'm like, I want the best war in the world. And then it needs to be a draw. Like I don't yeah. want either dude to lose, but yeah, I want to yeah. see like it. There's so much about this that speaks to my heart. And I just mm. can't wait to see Nick come walking out like, Come on, people. So the cool thing is, hopefully, I don't know what if they're going to use it or what, but I, I got contacted because they wanted to use part of an old interview I did with Nick in the like in one of the lead up pieces or something. So hopefully oh, nice. it, it makes it in there. I think it was one from San Jose when we were walking in the hallway and I forget who, if he had fought KJ or something and we're talking and Nick's like, I want nice cars and stuff. He's like talking about wanting to get paid. And uh -huh. I remember I said something <laughs> like, you know, Nick, like, I don't know. I know this is maybe a dumb or kind of an obvious question, but did you get hurt in there? And he's like, well, look at my face and this and that. Because he really, you you know what I mean. You had, Sometimes you get hit and sometimes you get hurt and sometimes you really get hurt in a fight. You know yeah. what I mean? So anyway, fair enough question. But we're doing this walk and talk and he's like in his zone and I love it so much. And I remember this and I just love him. And he's so like... I saw a couple of the guys that kind of roll with the Diaz crew uh, over at High Rollers this weekend and stuff. And they're just nice. good dudes. Yeah, yeah they're I good, love those good, guys. good people. And I've known them since like 2007 or so um, when I started covering Elite XC and all that. And so, you know, and, and so the same thing. I've known Robbie since then, too. So this one just mm -hmm. is really just speaks to my heart. And I'm just so happy to see both these guys throw it down. And I hope we just get an awesome fight. Yeah. Oh, and Nick Dolan. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my little little two cents but no it's gonna be an awesome fight and i'm excited to see it and i like when they do these fights like these fights that uh you know there's people from the same era people who are mm -hmm. who led the charge of like the mma legends and fandom and and got people into mma and now they're still active but i don't want to see them fighting some prospect young kid that's gonna like do all these flips and shit like I want to see them fight each other you know I don't want to yeah. I don't want to see um you know uh I don't know like I don't want to see the changing of the guard you know I want to I want to see two guys from the same era fight still because they still can and it's still going to be entertaining mm -hmm. and you know me the best man win but uh rooting for Nick as always uh and I think it's going to be fun I'm excited cool. So with that said, before we get out of here, props up to Joseph Benavidez and Carlos Condit. Yeah. Two guys that both retired this week. And to your point, yeah, they're G's. They've been around a long time. And at this point, the offers that they were going to get are going to start to be people 15 years younger and, you know, yeah. like young and hungry and right. stuff like that. And, <laughs> and, yeah, we're good. We're good. I think so, you can only get that like, man, it was really nice to beat a legend like you. I, I feel like you can only get that like once or twice before you're like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, we're good. 
good. I'm good. I don't want to hear that anymore. Right. Because over on Fight Island, it was cool because Carlos fought Court McGee. And so that yeah. one was a good fight. You're yeah. like, fair fight. And then Max Griffin comes along. You're like, yeah, bro, I get it. Good fight for you. But come on. <laughs> you know? You know? But yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. It'll be, it'll be entertaining. Um, okay. So as you can notice, we changed our frame up a little bit from last time. So Angela, you probably should remind folks where they can find you uh, on social media and everything. Um, you can find me at Angie Overkill on Twitter and Instagram and at Overkill Hill on TikTok. All right. And so you can find me on Twitter, Karen Bryant, K-A-R-Y-N. Bryant as in Kobe, no relation, but may he rest in peace. That is also where you can look for us on YouTube. My Instagram is KB Heat. Um, we do these everywhere. We're at what, like 40? This is 33, episode 33, right? So 33. People can go back and look at these. Um, I'll be doing a new uh, festivities with Hanato Laranja on Tuesday, which is fun. Hey. It is fun. This is also available on Spotify. Apple Podcasts and iHeartRadio, as well as Angie's IGTV. So make sure, did I already say that? I don't know, but make sure you go look for it there as well. Yes. Check it out. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you in the next one.